everyone welcome to another video so today i wanted to do a makeup look where i basically just kind of walk you through the kind of makeup i did while i was in china um if i have any instagram posts i'll put them up here screenshots of them but i didn't really have the means to take really good makeup photos of what i'm wearing i use android and honestly the one bad thing about android is that their front cameras just generally suck so and i just don't feel like changing to apple because i don't really have a great time using apple software but that being said, I figured I could just go ahead and recreate it for you. When I was in China, as I mentioned in a previous video, it was too humid to really have many layers on. It, like, it was just so humid that I really just eschewed everything except what was basically barely necessary. But for this makeup look, I am going to put on a couple more layers and show kind of like a more perfected version of it if it wasn't humid or like if it was like more temperate weather. First off, instead of primer, I have been experimenting lately with just like using like a setting spray beforehand. My skin today is actually in pretty good shape aside from some redness and some minor breakouts that are healing i my texture is pretty minimal today so i think just using a setting spray will be all i need so i just kind of generously missed my face and then i'm going to i finally found my bitty puff which i had lost for like months i finally found it i can't actually find bitty's social media anymore and it's sold out on beauty box korea which is where i got it from so i really wish i could have gotten more but it was pretty expensive to get these from overseas which is why i only have this one and i am going to use it until it falls apart because i really can't think of any better sponge on the market so i'm just going to use this to disperse the setting spray and then I'm going to put on some under eye primer. I'm going to use the Shy 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 eye cream. I did bring this with me to China as I mentioned in that video. I actually ended up liking it a lot more than I thought I did. I got this from Ulta during a 10x points promo and it arrived while I was gone, but I got the MAC all over face pen. This really interested me, especially because it had shades lighter than NC15. Now that being said, I think I might have gotten a bit of a tan while I was in Guilin. I tried not to, but I probably did. And so I kind of look like a ghost if I wear this all over, but I really want to try using it just in the center of my face to add volume. And so to kind of counterbalance that, I'm going to use this Makeup Forever HD Skin Foundation in 1Y04. For. This is ever so slightly too tan for me, so I think this will work on like the perimeter of my face and mixed in with the pen. So I'm just going to concentrate this on the outer portions of my face. I feel like it just doesn't really have any coverage. Like it matches me when I'm tan, it definitely matches the perimeter of my face, but I feel like it doesn't cover anything. Like see, I can still see everything coming through. I still have a little bit on the back of my hand, so I'm going to use that now, the MAC pen. I got it in the shade NC12, which probably is too light because I'm usually not that close to NC10, but, but you can see it is so ghostly white. I definitely made a mistake. If I like this enough, I may get a different shade, but for the time being, I have found this works pretty good on just the center of my face to add volume. Now you kind of see how it looks okay as long as I don't pull it all the way to the perimeter of my face. And I am going to overlap it slightly on top of the Makeup Forever foundation just so I look a little bit less warm. But again, I'm not going to take this all the way out to the perimeter of my face because then I will just look super ghostly. this retails for essentially the price of a foundation. It's like 30, 30 something dollars, but it only has 0.4 fluid ounces or 12 milliliters. So buy with caution because you're not really getting a good deal. It does work well around my mouth to kind of cover up that natural hyperpigmentation my lips have. And then I'm going to use another layer of setting spray. And I don't need anything that like makes my makeup lock in like concrete. Like I don't need that today because I'm not really doing anything super intensive. So just using my favorite D'Alba spray as usual. I was pretty sure I have a backup of it somewhere, but I'm not sure where I put it, but I'm pretty sure I have one. Okay, I'm going to use my JX Professional Concealer. I also really need to start planning more because half the mental labor for me right now is deciding what to film about when I sit down. I've never really considered myself a review channel, I just like to play with 
makeup and hopefully inspire other people with mono lids to experiment with makeup techniques for themselves that work for their eye shape. At the same time, there are a couple of products out there that I feel like I could be kind of helpful with recommending to people. I'm not sure, maybe. <laughs> with concealers being a big one because I don't really like liquid concealers and I'm super particular about my coverage. I'm experimenting with using white colored highlighters to kind of conceal the tear trough even further so I'm going to take a tiny brush and a very light colored powder and try see if I can do that. I remember seeing people on Dear Peachy do it to great effect. I don't know, I feel like I have yet to be able to replicate it as well as they do but I also don't have access to the kinds of products that people in China do. I was hoping to buy more stuff while I was in China last, but honestly, at the time I still didn't know if insurance would fix the car, and currently I'm dealing with some vet bills, so I just decided to not buy as much as I was hoping to. Plus, I just didn't really have the mental motivation or energy, so. Okay, and now I'm going to put on just a dash of eye primer. I'm gonna use the Rare Beauty eye primer. I'm going to use the Benefit Precisely My Brow in the shade Cool Gray. I haven't really gotten any new brow products in a while because I'm just still working on running through what I have. I think I over plucked the underside of this eyebrow. I was watching a Kathleen Lights video where she mentioned after she got COVID, she lost a lot of hair and it's still growing back so she has a lot of baby hairs. But I feel like I started losing hair in college and after I graduated, I feel like my hair used to be thicker before college. I don't know if I lost hair in college. Losing hair because of COVID definitely seems like something that would happen to me on top of everything else that has happened to me. So I'll see. I'm going to use the Glossier Brow Flick. I have a LASIK consultation at the end of this month, so I will have to stop wearing contacts for a week beforehand, so I really need to make sure I pre-film. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with a Armani balm as a base because this is what I would frequently do in China because this stuff just stays put forever. I haven't used this palette in a very long time, which is criminal considering how much I paid for it, so I'm going to also mostly use this Lisa Eldridge palette. And then lastly, just for like to show how I incorporate stick shadows into the look, I'm going to use either Tea House or Nabla number two. I think I'm leaning towards this one because the look overall is going to be cooler, but I'll see. Okay, I zoomed you guys in just a smidge. So I'm going to start off with this blush balm here. And for that, I could just honestly use anything. Like, it's so flexible. So I just recently did a little bit of a Sigma haul because a bunch of the sets were on such a deep discount. So there were a couple of sets I've been wanting, namely the Samantha Ravindal set and the Kristen Dominique set. So I picked those up. So I'm going to use a brush from the um, Makeup by Shayla collaboration set and I'm using the Neo Nude Balm in 52 and I'm going to use this all over my eyelid, mostly focusing it on like the upper side because I'm going to blend all the eyeshadow out into this so that my eyes and cheeks match. I would do this monochrome kind of makeup a lot when I was in China because it is just such an easy and fast way of ensuring that your look is very simple and very cohesive. So as you can see, I've just swept that all over the eyelids and it is so easy to do even with this fluffy brush. And now I'm going to go into the Nabla Cupid's Arrow number two. So my favorite makeup look I did in China was just a vertical gradient winged eyeliner look. You get so much playtime with this product, so I'm just going to very roughly sketch out where I want the wing to go. If I didn't use this shade, I either used Shiseido Tea House or I used the Victoria Beckham Ash Liner. As you can see, I blended it out to look so much softer by comparison, and this is what I'm going to build on top of. So you can see with me it going right into blending it out without scrounging around for a brush like I did with the first eye. You can see just how much easier it is to work with when you go straight in. 
compared to letting it set for a couple seconds. And sometimes for the edge, I can even just kind of use my fingernail to pull it out so that I don't make the shadow go all over the place. And this, even without eye primer, ensures that my eyeshadow is going to stay on all day no matter the weather, which is really awesome. I, you know, and you know, you could just end the look here and be like, I'm done with just a glitter eyeshadow on top, like a sparkly one. But I am going to fin add the finishing touches using Lisa Eldridge Vega. I do really want more eyeshadows from her, but I still am not over just how much more expensive it is to get this in the US. I did see that some of the products are on Selfridges now, and the products there are kind of a midpoint between the UK prices of Lisa Eldridge's website and the US one, so that's good. I have always wanted to try her foundation, and the foundation price is a lot more reasonable on Selfridges, so I will try that sometime, but not now. I mean, you know, I just, I have so many things going on right now in my personal life, so I'm going to use this shade here, and I'm going to use this to kind of like set and embellish the eyeliner. I want to carry the brown up a little bit further than it actually is, and I'm using a Sigma and Samantha Ravindal detailed blending brush. I'm gonna try and not drift off camera because I don't like when that happens. And any powder shadow will work just fine. You don't have to use Lisa Eldridge, but you can see comparing the two eyes now that it is now even more blended. The other reason I haven't gotten any more Lisa Eldridge palettes is for what I just stated. How long has it been since I last used this product? It's not like I'm a review channel where I can buy the products to review and never use them again and make the money back on the AdSense and the affiliate links and channel membership to keep buying products to review. I don't have that luxury. For the lower lash line, I would kind of do that. My lower lash line was much more likely to fade compared to my upper lash line. So I would take the stick shadow and I'm going to use it on the lower lash line again and I did kind of experiment with doing the double liner style while I was there but honestly I am just not the best at it so I'm just going to do a very baby one today and now I'm going to take the Samantha Ravindal shader crease which it's flat I think this is going to become a favorite lower lash line brush of mine the cupid's arrows blend so readily that even with a brush as soft as this it's still blends as you can see. I'm going to take the lightest shade in here. I didn't really do too much complicated lower lash line work in China. I really wanted to, but because of how humid it was, I didn't want it to fade and then look awful. Like if I had drawn in a bunch of fake lower lashes and then that all just melted off, it would just look so bad. So I ended up not doing that, but you can totally go for it if you want. It is something I'd like to master because it does have such a dramatic effect. So as you can see, I just kept the lower lash line very simple. Okay, now I really want to deepen up the look. I want to add a little bit of darkness. So I'm going to take the darkest shade in this palette, which is a black. I'm going to use this very sparingly on a Samantha Ravindal detail pencil and I'm just going to use this to add a little bit of darkness to the eyeliner and redefine it but beyond that I obviously don't want to turn this into like a super dark smoky eye because that's not really what we're going for. This black in this palette has a little bit of a cream to powder consistency to it so it'll be easy to apply. Do you see the difference between the two eyes right now? And then I'm just going to take a little bit just right here And th that is like, that's it. Like, it's so tiny, the amount I use. Next, I'm going to top this all off with some glitter. For that, I'm going to use this shade here, which is this shade down here because this shade is a little bit more, more sparkly. This one's a little bit more metallic. I'm not gonna use this. And I would just kind of lightly dot this shadow all over the top. Like I would just put eyeshadow across the top like this for that really glistening sparkly look. But I would go really lightly overall because I just wanted my eye, eye, eyeshadow to look like it's sparkling. I didn't want, I don't want the base pigment to cover up what I put down underneath. Very like kind of on trend. I was just, I was, I really just wanted to use it as a chance to do whatever was trendy there. And then I'm going to take that silver I showed you earlier and that's going to go on the lower lash line. So sometimes I would go for a really sparkly lower lash line and other times I would go for something a little bit more subdued so that the upper eyelid kind of was more in the focal point. It just kind of depended on my mood. This brush is going to be really great for a really precise liner, but I'm just going to use it on the lower lash line today. It's got enough give that I can use it on my lower lash line without it feeling like I'm scratching myself, which is really nice. So you can see how my lower lash line now has shine, but it's not quite as prominent. These shades are really pretty. 
I will say Lisa Eldridge does have a really good formula. It's just so expensive to buy. I'm hoping more products of hers can drop on Selfridges because then I can save a little bit of money. There's a lot of stuff I want on Selfridges right now, but I just can't really justify any of it. And then lastly, I'm going to do an inner corner and usually I would just take the same sparkly shade and then I would just put more of it on. And I had a lot of fun in China playing with my inner corners because inner corners are definitely a really popular place to put like the point of a makeup look. This is the Samantha Detail Shader. It's pointy so it's perfectly shaped. And I would just lay it on real nice and heavy because like that's totally a very common thing to do is to just have a lot of inner corner sparkle. So that way it's more, as you can see, it's more intense and bright than what's on my eyelid. So the two still look different. It's not like I put the same, same shade in two different places. I put it on a little bit heavy on this eye. And that's just kind of generally what I would do. So first I'm going to go ahead and use this pink all over my cheeks. This shade is lighter than the orangey shade that I use, that I have owned first. That one is so easy for me to accidentally over apply. Thankfully, it's pretty merciful when you blend it out, but um, still, I'm just going to use a little bit to start with. And when I was in China, I really liked concentrating it underneath my eye look. Okay, yeah, this is pretty light, so I can definitely put on more. This is not really the right brush shape for the job. I'm just using it because I do. This is like the perfect cream blush brush for me. The shape is not good for what I'm using it for, so that's why I have it turned on its side. But as you can see, these balms are just absolute perfection. I really wish they were easier to get a hold of. And if I have it out here in the corners of my eyes, I will try to avoid bringing it too far into my nose so that it's not just everywhere. Yeah, so you can see when I turn my head, it looks quite sheer, but then of course when I'm facing the camera, you can see there's a lot more and it matches my eyeshadow because you can still see the pink coming through. You can see that I'm deliberately choosing to use a lot of really thin layers to slowly build up this product to where I want it to be because I do not want to over apply this. That's why it's taking me so many layers. I'm really just gradually building it up to where I want it because the placement really matters. But that is what that blush application looks like. So I generally speaking would keep it right to the outer portion of my face. It also does help with kind of counterbalancing how large my jaw is. I'm going to go ahead and take the same brush and I'm going to do my bronzer and contour. So, or just contour. So I pretty much just brought like one product to do all of my contouring and stuff with. So I am going to kind of just stay on that track so I brought the flower nose chocolate contour palette with me and I used that to do everything but today I'm going to use something else mostly just because I feel like it and to give my flower nose a little bit of a break I'm going to use the bronzer from this hourglass sculpted palette this right here this is one of my favorite bronzer shades in my collection and I'm using the same brush so that the two colors can kind of mix together now this bronzer can get a little bit pigmented, so I am going to be very careful about the application. Contour and bronzer in China are very, very targeted, and it's definitely meant more to sculpt the face, especially for people like me who want to contour the jawbone and make your face a little bit more shaped like, quote unquote, like a goose egg face, because being tan is not really the fashion there. And so as you've probably noticed my channel, I on my videos, I tend to use bronzer and contour pretty much the exact same way as it's used in Asia. It's just my preference. I'll, I'll zoom back out in a little bit, not intending to stay zoomed in for my whole face, but I figured you guys wouldn't mind. Okay, so next I kind of just ignored highlighter while I was there because it was so humid, my skin produced its own oils. But if I were to use highlighter, I would go for something that kind of has that translucent finish to it that is a little bit more kind of a balance between sparkliness and high shine definitely just something that kind of as you can see where that glow is it would just kind of accentuate that so to mimic that i'm going to use the flower nose revelation highlighter one of my favorite shades of highlighter of all time as i have said before and I'm just going to use my finger to really just accentuate that spot on my cheek that is already bright. I really just wish they would bring these back someday because these are so pretty. And then I'm going to use a different finger so that I don't get blush on my nose. And I also love using this on my nose as a nose highlighter. 
Now, while I was in China, I did not put any highlighter on the tip of my nose because my nose will get sweaty enough, but I'm at home today, so I'm gonna do a little bit. All right, and that is my face done. So I'm gonna do my lashes off camera and then we'll be back to finish the look and I'll also do my lipstick at that point and I'll be zooming back out and stuff like that. Okay, so the lashes I tried today, I thought looked so promising when I put it on my right eye. But as you guys have probably noticed, my eyes are two different sizes, so if the lash band is too flimsy, then it'll kind of enhance that size difference. And as you can see, this eye is so much smaller looking than this eye because the lash band is clear and flimsy and so it just gets pushed down. I also, if I don't put it on at the exact same angle, it can also enhance that difference. So here I was able to get the angle better so the lashes are more curly, but here as you can see, the lashes kind of go straight and then up as opposed to like straight up. Now I look like I have completely two different eyes, which unfortunately this does happen to me sometimes. There's not really much I can do about it. But the one thing that I can do to kind of help with that is to add a little bit more darkness to the smaller eye and pull it up higher. That can help balance it just a little bit. So that's what I'm going to do. And so now you can see that if you if I look down, you can see that I had to totally make one eye darker than the other. But when my eyes are open, it really helps to counterbalance the size difference. So sometimes, sometimes I just have to do that. Sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. And then I am going to take what's left on the brush and just darken up the outer corner here, just so that the eyeliner is more balanced looking on both eyes. I did lower lash mascara. I did the lashes. I do really like these lashes in terms of how they look, but if I don't apply them correctly, then I'm in for it. So I don't really think I'm going to use these again. Um, I've already gone ahead and let my hair down. I'm going to do my lip liner. Just saw the new Roman collection drop on YesStyle, so and it's the cheapest to get there, which is what I've been hoping for for oh, like two months now. I've been waiting for it to drop on YesStyle, so I wouldn't have to get it from Beauty Box Korea or Olive Young. So I'm very happy about that. But I'll have to see what my budget allows me to do. And I'm really excited about the Roman collection because Minsko has a hyper has hyperpigmentation around her lips, and she kind of developed them as a like to be like able to cancel out that hyperpigmentation and I struggle with that as well so I am really looking forward to getting my hands on it. Doing an overlined lip is definitely the trend there in China right now but as opposed to doing a full defined lip it tends to be more blurred and soft. My lips are not really proportional to my face. I feel like my mouth distance is so short, my corners point down, so the more that I can fake it with a blurred lip line, the better I think my whole face looks. And I saw Charlotte Tilbury released matte lip blurs, and some of the model photos actually were that exact same gradient look. Of course, she's gonna try and claim that like she came up with it herself. And one thing I'm really excited for is that the Romand lip liner collection comes with a really taupey shade that's meant to like do lip contouring. I'm really excited to see if that can help me improve the, my ability to contour my lips. Um, now, as for lip color, I definitely wore more tinted balms because I was eating so much, but I could totally also see this looking great with a more matte lip color which is what I would have gone for if it wasn't for the fact that I was too lazy to reapply so I'm going to use a matte shade today I'm going to use the shade 303 which is this lovely pink I think this will work just fine perfect I am so hit or miss with matching my lip shade to my makeup look I'm always glad when I can get it right and the square tip applicator does seem kind of cumbersome but it's actually surprisingly usable and then I just kind of use my lips to blend it out This is going to be my finished makeup look. I'm not the biggest fan of the fact that my eyes are two different sizes, but that does happen sometimes. So this is just a very easy look. This is pretty much exactly what my makeup looked like in China almost every single day. Just really simple, minus the false lashes. I just used a ton of mascara, but I would put my blush there. I'd have my bronzer and contour set up. I didn't use any foundation. I just used powder as I mentioned in my humidity video, but if my skin looks perfected like this, then so much the better. But that's what everything was looking like. Really, really pretty. I also just realized I totally forgot to use setting powder, so I'm going to do that really quick so you can see the skin mattified. <laughs> I need to get it together. 
And I went ham with setting powder when I was in China for pretty obvious reasons, but I don't need to go as crazy today. So now my skin is more mattified and blurred and that's what everything's looking like. Really, really pretty. So I'm gonna go ahead and end this video here. I may film another video after this. My makeup's looking so cute today that I should take advantage of this. With that, I am going to sign off now. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this makeup look. I tried to make it a little bit more of a tutorial than usual since I know um, I want this look to be easily recreatable by anyone who watches. This is just such an easy look and if you're like me, you love wearing makeup, you love wearing a lot of makeup, then this will be a really great daily look for you to try as well. So if you do try it, please let me know how it goes. I will see you guys hopefully in the next one. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.